Bibles, open to Numbers chapter 14, most of us are there, and then you should have the Shobi app open for lesson 60, so that you can keep your, take your notes on that sheet there. So this is lesson 60, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram rebel. We saw Moses, or Miriam and Aaron, they had rebelled. They were jealous of Moses and were punished. We saw that a large contingent of Israel did not have trust in God. They listened to the report of the ten spies who said, Yep, it's a nice land. Oh, it would be nice to have, but we just don't have the faith that God will get us there. They didn't, and the rest of the people didn't listen to Joshua. And Caleb saying, have faith, people. Yes, there are giants there, but God will get us through. So what did they do? Well, we saw that they turned around in the wilderness. They said they didn't want to go. And then, so God said, fine. That's what you want. You don't want to go in land. I won't let you. But you're going to wander in this wilderness for 40 years. So the next day they woke up, of course, and wanted to go fight. And that's what we'll see today. Okay? Numbers chapter 14, start at uh, verse 40 here, right towards the end. Chapter 14, I have to turn a page there, but go to verse 40. So this is the morning after they've been told they're going to walk in the wilderness for 40 years and all die there except for Joshua, Caleb, and those under 20. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain saying, Lo, we be here and we'll, and we'll go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore, now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord, but it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp, Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. These people woke up the next morning. Did you ever have that, where you regretted something later on? You did something, or you said something, or you behaved some way, or you made a decision? And the next morning, or even maybe a few hours later, you regretted it. Why did I do that? That is the reaction of these ungodly Canaanites, they woke up the next morning and said, well, now we're here going into the land and fighting the Canaanites and the Amalekites. Sure sounds a lot better than walking in the wilderness for 40 years. We're sorry, Moses. We've sinned. Let's go into the land. And Moses says, no. No, God has commanded that you will walk in the wilderness for 40 years because of your sin yesterday. God's not going to change that. You will do that. And if... You try to go, how foolish of you, look. And they could probably, where they were, see, far off in the distance, in some hills, people, maybe lines of soldiers standing there. The Canaanites and Amalekites were not foolish. They were ready. They knew these Canaanites were getting close to their land, and they knew exactly where the Israelites were headed for their land. Any wise country in that situation, knowing that you're about to be overrun and invaded, would activate their military. And probably all along a nice ridge on top of some type of hill. Ways distant. When the Canaanites and Amalekites lined up along there. And the Israelites could see them. And now that looks better to them than listening and being punished by God, but it's too late. Moses says, You're a fool to try to go into that land. The Lord is not with you. If you try to attack the Amalekites and Canaanites over there that you see, they'll destroy you. The Lord is not with you. And to that end, we see and we read in here, the people did not listen to Moses and they decided they were going to go, thankfully, wisely, we'll see in the future they don't always do this, the Philistines, but they left the ark in the tabernacle. Well, some of the wicked Israelites think, well, fine, God won't be with us, we'll take him with us. And they would take that ark with them into battle, find some 
wicked Levites, maybe, or priests, to take it with them. In this case, thankfully, they didn't do that. The, the ark, we read, stayed in the tabernacle where it should have stayed. But these foolish Israelites, who were now rebelling in a different way, took off. And we read, they went down into the valley to go up towards that other hill. And there they were destroyed. You can imagine the Israelites all getting ready in the morning, strapping their sandals on. Probably don't have much for weapons or armor. They've been marching in the wilderness. But they take what they can, and they think the Lord will be on their side, and they take off and are destroyed in battle. Foolishness on their part. Chapter 15 then shows the story of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Let's pick that up here. Sorry, did I say 15? I meant 16. Chapter 16. Let's begin reading at verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the sons of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men, of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Here we see Korah and Dathan and Byram. They also question Moses and now Aaron's position. This is a huge multitude, they say. And you think you can put yourselves over this whole multitude here? It's too much for you. You take this small group, we'll take this group. Along with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram came 250, they're called princes, men of renown. Well known among the congregation. Maybe these were even some of the men that Moses had set up over the tens and the fifties and the hundreds and the five hundreds and the thousands. These are well respected men. And so those 250 men go with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram to call into question Moses and Aaron's authority. You guys think you're the big shots. You think you get to call all the shots. Who put you in charge? We sinfully question that too. Mom and dad leave and an older sibling is in charge. Well, who made you the ruler? Mom and dad did. And just by the birth order that God has given you in, God, he's made you the elder in the family. We know, we already saw when this argument, same argument came up with Moses and Aaron, or, sorry, Aaron and Miriam, God put Moses in charge. It was the Lord who put him in charge. And that's going to be exactly the argument here. Verse 4, let's see what happens here. And when Moses heard it, he fell Upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who his holy, and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto them. This do take your censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the Lord God has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister to them. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? 
For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron? And ye murmur against him. Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eli, and said, We will not come up. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Moses was very wroth, and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. Moses, when he heard those words, we read he collapsed, fell onto his face. We can, we can imagine him there in that prostrate position, probably praying to God, whether it was out loud that all could hear or just in his own mind, he was praying to God for help. He needed help. Here is another difficult situation. So Moses told Corey, he said, Tomorrow take your censers. The Lord will tell us who is holy. You see, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they were of the tribe of Levi. They were given already an important position. They got to live closest to the tabernacle, as you saw in your worksheets. They got to live right next to it. They were close to the Lord. And they were given special jobs, jobs to help the priests do their work in the tabernacle. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram weren't happy enough with that. They weren't happy with the God position God gave them. They wanted more. They wanted to be the priests and have just as much power. Only Aaron and his sons could go in to the holy place and the most holy place. Korah and his men, they wanted to do it. They thought, we can bring our own incense. We don't need Aaron and the priest to do it for us. And oh, that foolish statement. Oh, that foolish statement of Korah. He actually dared to say, you brought us, Moses, out of the land flowing with milk and honey into this desert to die. We would like to go into that land that flows with milk and honey, Canaan, and now we can't. Oh, Korah. Sure, Egypt had leeks, garlics, melons, meats, and all the delicious things, breads and cakes that were there. It was a rich and wealthy land, but it was filled with ungodly, wicked, sinful people. And he called that land a land flowing with milk and honey. That term is a term that was reserved and used by Moses and the godly men for Canaan. And here he twisted those words and called Egypt that. Nope. By saying a land flowing of milk and honey, Koradathan and Abiram are saying, Egypt should be the promised land. We are smarter than God. We know better. That's the land that we should be in. Let's see what the result of this is. Verse 16. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you a censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, Shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up, and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. 
And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they gat up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own hand. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth swallow, opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men, that offered incense. Moses prayed that God would not accept the offering of these men. They were told to come out with their censers before all the people. And so they did. Korah and the 250 princes came to the tabernacle with their censers, not because they wanted to obey Moses, but they were going to show him that they could do this as well. They brought their own fire. Their own fire, not the fire from the altar of incense or altar of burnt offering as the priests were commanded to do it was Nadab and Abihu all over again, remember they thought they could do it of their own selves strange fire, that needed to be punished many of the wicked people joined in with Korah, Dathan and Abiram we'll be on their side they were not on Moses and Aaron's side God needed to teach them a lesson God told Moses, tell the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Byram. Only they should be in them and their families. I'll punish them. And so Moses warned the elders, get to the people away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Byram. Any man that's too near them will be punished. We can only imagine what that must have looked like there to be standing now, to back up away from the tents. And there stands Korah, Dathan, and Abiram in front of their tents with their wives standing next to them. Their children gathered probably all around their feet. And their servants gathered around them and their possessions. And then to all of a sudden see the ground break apart. And a large chasm, a hole, open up. And we can imagine the land beginning to fall into that hole in that pit. So down goes the tents and down goes Korah, Dathan, and Abiram and their children and their families into that large chasm hole. And you can imagine the people fleeing and backing up, getting further and further away, afraid that that hole may continue to open and they too will fall in. And then just like that, the Lord closed up the hole. And the lives of Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and their families and any that were with them were snatched away. That made an impact on the people and they fled. They were fearful that they would fall in. And now what about those 250 other men who brought their censers to the door that were followers, those princes of Korodath and Abiram? God gives another sign. Fire comes down from heaven and burns them up, destroys them because of their sin and their wickedness. God heard the, Moses, the prayer of Moses. And it was answered. For any man to sin against God or to question God is wickedness, foolishness. And this is the just judgment that they deserve. Wicked men who doubt that there is a God. There will be fire for them, maybe not on this earth, but there will be in heaven. We too must be like those People who were standing around the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and God commanded them, get away from them. Those are wicked men. We have to do the same with the ungodly. We don't want to be like Lot, seeing how close we can get, and living in that wicked city, and having all the fun and pleasures, and then just show up maybe to church on Sunday, and then go back to living in our sin. 
Well, we must separate ourselves, we're called and commanded to do, just like These people here are called to do with Korah, Dathan, and Byron, lest we be swallowed up with them in their sins. That's the result. All too common result when we want to go have fun with the world and do their things, we become swallowed up by it. It's too much to resist. And we find ourselves walking and living in those same sins too. So a good reminder for us to not be friends with the world. We can know that God watches over us.